Hi, my name is Elkin Roa. I'm from Onchip, Bucaramanga, Colombia. Um, we are working together with Sci5 uh, to release some analog IP for uh, the low power and low cost uh, embedded systems. <clears throat> so, first time system chip designers um, are limited by design costs and um, IP licensing. IP licensing requires uh, a monotonic uh, um, agreement uh, that decrease uh, or like lower the momentum of new, new key applications. Um, the figure in the right shows the average growth of the first time system on chip designers that are taken from Semico Research Corporation. Um, you will see that the pace has been uh, kind of flattened uh, considering the complexity um, and also the design cost. So here is the, um, here is the uh, e series platform from Sci-Fi. Uh, here we have the core and all the, um, the back models and different models. We also have the tiling link buses. So we, here we are highlighting the always on domain um, connected to the tiling link bus. In this always on domain, um, is this supposed to work for the low power embedded systems for uh, like always on sensors? So here in the always on domain, we have um, clocking circuitry that requires to be uh, low power hungry. And we also have power on recess and uh, different voltage monitors that uh, um, like trigger events for, uh, to, to the power management to decide what kind of uh, uh, power management mode has to, do, has to go. So now I'm gonna focus on those blocks that are always on domain, so all the blocks that we are, are, we are going to show here are uh, for this kind of always on domain. And in the always domain, we have two kind of different uh, implementations. One is uh, using um, the always on logic for uh, the voltage domain of the battery. So if in order to do that, you need to, uh, to implement that logic in tickle size standard cell library. So the, that, that's, that's kind of the, the, the problem with that is that then you are uh, consuming power because you are in the large voltage domain. The other way is try to um, decrease uh, the voltage domain by using a micro LDO and put the, it's not working anymore. So to put the always on domain in, under a micro LDO. So in, in, order to, in order to decrease power, this always on domain logic has to be uh, designed or implemented in a near threshold standard cell library. So, but there is a trade-off there. So if you use the B case, then you will need to uh, keep up with all the losses of the micro LDA. Micro LDA still, those are linear regulators. They, uh, the, the efficiency for light loads are not great. So there is kind of um, a trade-off between both. So all these blocks that we are going to show here are um, based for the uh, for the always on logic that it is in the three point in the in the battery domain. So here is the always on domain uh, the always on um, block from the e series platform for Sci5, and there we have the power management unit. The power management unit is a state machine that steps through a microcode program that um, <coughs> triggers events like uh, turn on regulator or even uh, takes care of the voltage monitors. Um, so this, this power management unit uh, in, in, in this platform has like eight instructions where you can even program kind of different uh, sleep modes, deep sleep modes, or, and so on. <clears throat> so in that, that always on domain, we have these analog peripherals that are required in order to trigger events, in order to um, to sense variables outside, like for instance, we uh, we need brownout detectors, power resets, LDOs. We need uh, uh, even the voltage reference, the clocking circuitry, so low frequency crystal drivers and RC oscillators that require to be low power. So all these blocks, you need to go um, try to to go shopping outside and buy those IPs, and you might 
uh, need to consider uh, marathonic agreements and also licensing costs for like, for, for instance, for a banana detector could be uh, in the order of the $10,000. <clears> so this, um, so now we're gonna show all, each, all those blocks, try to highlight some of the, of the details. So just for, for the purpose, we have done, um, this, this kind of blocks are, are not toy blocks. These have been verified also for, for uh, a lot of people uh, with experience. So these have been designed with uh, an aggregated 20 plus years experience team. So these are robust. The, we are using um, operating conditions of minus 40, 40 Celsius to 125 Celsius, and also 10% of for the voltage rails, in this case for the 1.8 volts, so we had to uh, low, nose, no, low nose bind up, so that's why the power consumption is quite high in this case, but it's because we, we are using this for um, uh, high resolution uh, data converters. So we also have LDOs, and this LDO um, was designed in order to be low area, so then you can put, it, put a lot of LDOs uh, within the system on chip. Um, this, um, <clears throat> This LDO um, can go, uh, is, is, is able to, to provide from 10 microns all the way to 50 milliamp, it's programmable, so you can even decrease power, uh, current, uh, current steady power from the LDO. It's a traditional LDO, so there is nothing fancy here as an architecture, but it is fully robust. We, we have a lot of uh, programmability in order to, to trim it to a, a correct value. So also we have the biasing control. So this biasing control circuitry is used, is used for the power management unit where you can turn on and off uh, a lot of the analog blocks. And here we are showing that we have a kind of a three sigma value of, of, of around three to two point four percent. Uh, so we have kind of different uh, current sources. Um, so we also have a crystal low frequency driver. Uh, the good thing about this crystal low frequency driver is it's capable to, or is enabled to accept different uh, capacitor loads. So we can use different crystal drivers that require crystal load from three, about four picofarads all the way to 12 picofarads. So you can even use cheaper uh, crystal drive crystals. Um, and this is also low power current. <clears throat> um, we also are proud to, to show this RC oscillator. This RC oscillator is quite low power and high accurate. Uh, this, this RC oscillator, um, uh, is the error amplifier is the one that is always consuming the most of the power. And this um, error amplifier is not always on. So it is always, it is on just in cases when we need it, when we need to, to, uh, to compare it. So that's why we can get, um, uh, low power consumption. <clears throat> so the results of this, of this RC oscillator, um, even though it's, it's uh, for 3.3 volts is five, is five microamps, for 1.8 volts is one microamp, but we have uh, um, standard deviation within Monte Carlo and all corners in, in, in 180 nanometers technology, uh, about 60, uh, uh, for three sigma, about 180 hertz. So we also have a burnout detector. Uh, this burnout detector <clears throat> has, has five different uh, monitor levels. So you can use it for different battery applications. Um, this, all these levels are programmable. Um, and you can even adjust when the battery is, going, is running out. Uh, so, and this, again, this is also uh, a low power burnout detector. We also have a power on reset. This power on reset, um, uh, the, the good thing also about the power on reset is also uh, multi-level. Uh, and this, mul this power on reset has their own voltage reference, and this voltage bar ref reference is the or in the order of nanoamps. Um, we uh, trigger events from the power on reset based on counters and probability. We also releasing uh, data converters, high, high uh, multi-resolution data converters with a kind of, uh, for you can use, use, uh, use it for applications that don't require um, uh, a lot of resolution, so you can even programmable, program that uh, resolution from the DAC. 
Um, this DAC is being implemented with an IDC because we are reusing. So in this case, if you put all the bootstrap and the driver, you will be able to, uh, to use this on an ADC, a SAR ADC. This is shown in the, in the next slide. So now, now you can use the same IP as an ADC. And it's also a multi-resolution ADC, a SAR ADC, and it's also being uh, uh, kind of verified uh, within corners and Monte Carlo. <clears throat> so we also have um, multi-throughput, uh, uh, multi uh, fully synthesized through a random number generator that can you, even you use it for uh, kind of security applications. And uh, all here we are showing that we pass all the NIST tests. And finally, um, this, all these um, analog blocks, these all are always on domain blocks, have been put in a system on chip uh, with the 831 core from Sci-5. And it's being taped out uh, in 180 nanometers vanilla logic process. Um, and we have used a flow methodology that from so we are instantiating all the analog blocks in Chisel. So this flow methodology is kind of uh, unique in the sense that uh, this analog IP should be easy to plug in whatever system or application you need to, to have. Um, and after that, we are putting, uh, after Chisel, you know that we, uh, you can even uh, uh, generate a very low that then you can plug it in, in commercial system tools flow. And also for the power management strategy, so you put all the inputs, the, like voltage monitors, and even user application uh, strategy, and then from there you can generate it, uh, power modes and even transition events that uh, will be um, programmable through the power management unit that is in the, in the sci-fi core. And the deliverable. So we, we want to show, show you awareness of the, <clears throat> that this uh, is open source, but not everything can be open source. So the very low A model, the FSM, the user documentation, and the Scala will be open source through the free chip project. But in order to get the schematics and layout and all these things, you have to go through the design chart program, through the design chart program, sci-fi chart program. Uh, uh, then you will be able to get all the rest of the files. You have an NDA uh, with the foundry. Uh, finally, a uh, timeline of the work. So we are taping out uh, at the end of this year with Sci-5. And we are planning to also include uh, FIs, like SARA, uh, PCI Express, and USB FI um, uh, in the next year. And we are expecting to have a qualified range of IP in 2019. So as a summary, uh, we have released, we are releasing a lot of analog blocks for the always on domain, like battery power applications uh, in 180 nanometers technology. Thank you so much.